Moadip. Okay. Starting on page 201. Very small text. Book 2. Moadip. Right. From Frank Herbert's Dunn. Two or one. So the text starts on page two or three. Okay. When my father, the Padasha Emperor, heard of Duke Leto's death and the manner of it, he went into such a rage as we had never. Uh, before seen he blamed my mother and the compact compact forced on him to place a Bene Gesserit on the throne he blamed the guild and the evil old baron he blamed everyone in sight not expecting even me for he said I was a witch like all the others and when I sought to comfort him saying it was done according to an older law of self-preservation to which even the most ancient rulers gave allegiance he sneered at me and asked if i thought him a weakling i saw then that he had been aroused to this passion not by concern over the dead duke but by what that death implied for all royalty as i look as i look back on it I think there may have been some uh, prescience in my father too, for it is certain that his line and Moadib's shared common ancestry. In my father's house by Princess Irulan. Quote, now Harkonnen shall kill Harkonnen, end quote, Paul whispered. He had awakened shortly before nightfall, sitting up in the sealed and darkened still, still tent. As he spoke, he heard the vague stirrings of his mother where she slept against the tent's opposite wall. Paul glanced at the proximity detector on the floor, steadying the detail, dials illuminated in the blackness by phosphor tubes. It should be night soon, his mother said. Why don't you lift the tent shades? Paul realized that her breathing had been different from some had been different for some time, that she had lain silent in the darkness until certain he was awake. Lifting the shades wouldn't help, he said. Lifting the shades won't help, he said. There's been a storm, the tents covered by sand. I'll dig us out. No sign of Duncan yet? None. Paul rubbed absently at the dosa, docal signet on his thumb. And a sudden rage against the very substance of this planet, which had helped kill his father, set him trembling. I heard the storm begin, Jessica said. The undemanding emptiness of her words helped restore some of his calm he his mind focused on the storm and he had seen it begin through the transparent end of his still still tent cold dribbles of sand crossing the basin then ru then run runnels and tails following the sky he had looked up to a rock spire seen a chain shape under the blast becoming a low cheddar colored wedge sand funneled into their basin had sh uh, shadowed the sky with dull curry then blotted out all light as the tent was covered tent bows tent bows had creaked once as they accepted the pressure then silent broken only by the dim bellows wheezing 
of their sand snorkel pumping air from the surface. Try the receiver again, Jessica said. No use, he said. He found his still suit's water tubes, water tube in its slip at his neck, drew a warm swallow into his mouth, and he thought that that here he truly began in a an Arakin Arakin experience. Arakin experience. Arakan experience. Arakan experience. Living on reclaimed moisture from his own breath breath and body it was flat and tasteless water but it soothed his throat jessica heard paul drinking left the slickness of her own still suit clinging to her body but she refused to accept his her thirst to accept it would require awakening fully into the terrible necessities of arachnus where they must guard even fractional traces of moisture hoarding the few drops in the tense catch pockets uh, begrudging a breath wasted on the open air so much easier to drift back down into sleep but there had been a dream in this day's sleep and she shivered at memory of it she had held dreaming hands beneath sand flown flow where name had been written duke leto atreides the name had blurred with the sand and she had moved to restore it but the first letter filled before the last was begun the sand would not stop her dream became wailing louder and louder that ridiculous wailing part of her mind had realized the sound was her own voice as a tiny child little more than a baby a woman not quite visible to memory was going away my unknown mother jessica thought the bene Gesserit who bore me and gave me to the sisters because that's what she was commanded to do was she glad to rid herself of a harkonnen child the place to hit the place the place to hit them is in the spice paul said how can he think of attack at a time like this she asked herself an entire planet full of spice she said how can you hit them there she heard his stirring the sound of her her of their pack being dragged across the tent floor it was a sea pow power an air power of Kaladan, he said. Here is desert power. The Fremen, Fremen, are the key. His voice came from the vicinity of the tense uh, spinster. Her Bene Gesserit training sensed in his tone an unresolved bitterness towards her. All his life, he has been trained to hate Harkonnens. Her thought now. He finds he is a Harkonnen because of me. Little, how little he knows me. I was my Duke's only woman. I accepted his life and his values even to defy my Bene Gesserit orders. The tense glow tab came alight under Paul's hand, filled the dome, domed area with green radiance. Paul crouched at the Sphinster, his still suit, still suit hood adjusted to the open desert, forehead capped, mouth filled in, uh, filter in place, nose plug adjusted. Only his dark eyes were visible, a narrow band of face that turned once towards her and away. Secure yourself to the open, he said, and his voice was blurred behind the filter. Jessica pulled the filter across her mouth, began adjusting her, her hood as she watched Paul break the tent seal. Sand rasped as, his, as he opened the sphinster, and a bird, bird, fizzle, bird fizzle of grains 
ran into the tent before he could immobilize it with a static uh, compaction tool. A hole grew in the sand wall as the tool realigned the grains. He slipped out and her ears followed his progress to the surface. What will, what will we find out there? She wondered. Harkonnen troops and the uh, Sard Sardukar, 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 Sardukar. Those are dangers we can expect. But what of the dangers we don't know? She thought of the compaction tool and the other strange instruments in the pack. Each of these tools suddenly stood in her mind as a sign of mysterious danger. She felt then a hot breeze from surface sand touch her cheek where they were, where they were exposed above the filter. Pass out the pack. It was Paul's voice, low and guarded. She moved to obey, heard the water uh, little John little Jones liturgens gurgle as she shoved the pack across the floor she peered upward saw paul framed against stars here he said and reached down pulled the pack to the surface now she saw only the circle of stars they were like the luminous tips of weapons aimed down at her a shower of meteors crossed her patch of night the meteor seemed to be seemed to her like a warning, like tiger stripes, its luminous grave slats clabbering her blood, and she felt the chill of the price of her of their hands. Hurry up, Paul said, I want to collapse the tent. A shower of sand from the surface brushed her hand a left hand. How much sand will the hand hold? she asked herself. Shall I help you? Paul asked. No. She swallowed in a dry throat, slipped into the hole, felt uh, static packed sand rasp under her hands. Paul reached down, took her arm. She stood beside him on a soothed, smooth patch of starlit desert, stared around. Sand almost brimmed their basin, leaving only a dim lip of surrounding rock. She probed the fur, uh, further darkness with her trained senses. Noise of small animals, birds, a fall of a fall of dislodged sand and faint creature sands within it. Paul collapsing their tent, recovered it, recovered it up the hole. Starlit displaced, starlight displaced, just enough of the night to change each shadow with menace. To charge each shadow with menace, she looked at patches of blackness. Black as a blind remembering, she thought. You listened for pack sounds, for the cries of those who hunted your ancestors in a past so ancient only your most primitive cells remember. The ears see, the nostrils see. Presently, Paul stood up beside her, said, Duncan told me that if he was captured, he would hold out this long. We must leave there now. He shrouded the pack, crossed to the shallow lip of the basin, climbed to a ledge that looked down on open desert jessica followed automatically noting how she now lived in her son's orbit for now it is my grief heavier than the sands of the sea she thought this world has emptied me of all that but the oldest purpose tomorrow's life i live now for my young duke and the daughter yet to be she left the sand drag, drag her feet as she climbed to Paul's side. He looked north across a line of rocks, steadying a distant, uh, 
escrement. The faraway rock profile was like an ancient battleship of the sea seas outlined by stars. The long swish of its lap lift of it lifted on an invisible wave with symbols of boomerang antennas funnels arching back a pie shaped unthrust up thrusting at the stern an orange glare burst above the silhouette of a line of brilliant purple cut downward towards the glare another line of purple another and another up thrusting orange glare it was like an ancient naval battle remembered shell fire and the sight held them staring pillars of pillars of fire paul whispered a ring of red eyes lifted over the distant rock lines of purple laced the sky jet flares and la la last guns jessica said the dust uh the dust reddened first moon of arrakis lifted above the horizon to their left and they saw a storm trail there a ribbon of movement over the desert it must be harkonnen caught th thopters hunting us paul said the way they're uh, cutting up the desert it's as if they were making certain they stamped out whatever there the way the what whatever's there the way you stamp out a nest of insects on a nest of atreides jessica said we must seek cover paul said we'll head south and keep to the rocks if they caught us in the open he turned adjusting to the pack to his shoulder though they're killing anything that moves he took one step along the ledge and in that instant heard the heard the low hiss of gliding aircraft saw the dark shapes of orno ornithopters above them 